What's up guys, Eric Fasquist here with a brand new design basics video for you today. And in this video we're going to be talking about color. Now this is a very important topic, but it's also a very kind of difficult lesson to teach because there's so much information out there that you guys need to understand and know about color so that you can use it in your work in the most effective way possible. So in this lesson I'm going to be giving you guys sort of the condensed, crunched down version of that, an abbreviated version if you will, to help you right now learn as much as you can about color in the shortest amount of time possible. So let's jump right into it. Now the first thing I want to show you guys here is this very handy tool that I like to use which is the Adobe Color CC uh, website. So if you just go to Google and type in Adobe Color you will be brought to this page here and one of the first things that I want to point out to you guys is that you have obviously this big color wheel here but this drop down menu which sort of gives you a breakdown of some of the different types of colors. Now if you notice here it says analogous and what that means is that all of these colors are going to appear next to each other on the color wheel. So as I move this around you'll notice that there's these five different points and they're all next to each other so all of these values down below are the analogous colors. Now if you have a specific color in mind you can plug in the RGB or the hexadecimal value and it will give you the colors that are next to it. Now you can kind of fan these out if you want it to cover a broader spectrum of colors, but you can see that these all sort of live in the same family. Now if I were to change this from analogous color to let's say complementary color, now you'll be dealing with colors which are opposite one another on the color wheel. So for example here, you know, red and green are complementary colors, orange and blue are complementary colors, and purple and yellow of course. So you can move these different uh, handles here in and out and get different you know color values here on the wheel but the main thing to remember is that these are colors that will for the most part work very well together so let's go ahead and change this now from complementary to let's say monochromatic and as you might have you know guessed and you might have heard this term before what monochromatic is is basically colors that are all in the same range here. So you've got a different values of green, different values of blue, and so on and so forth. But again, if you had a specific color, you can type in the value right down here, and this Adobe Color tool will give you all of these associated colors and their corresponding values. So that's just sort of a, a useful tool if you wanted to come in here and play around with this. I encourage you guys to do that because it's really helpful, and it very clearly demonstrates the different types of colors here that you can get in your work. So as you're working it's important to try and establish you know color palettes that not only fit with the theme of what you're trying to design but also colors that just work together so that there's a sense of harmony in your work. Now if for example you're designing an invitation for Halloween you might not be using a lot of yellow and blue just like for Christmas invitations you might not be using a lot of purple and yellow. So it's important to think about the types of projects that you're working on and the colors that would be most appropriate for those. Now there's one other cool feature here that I wanted to show you guys and that's the explore option. So if you click on that tab up here you'll see that you have all of these different swatches. Now these are for the most part I believe uh, user presets which have been saved but if you come up here to this search bar for example and let's type in for example Halloween like I just mentioned before you'll get all of these you know color swatches and uh, palettes which have been saved by other people and you can see that there is actually a lot of those kind of uh, autumn colors in here like the oranges, the golden browns and yellows and things like that um, and you know you'll get the occasional kind of random color in there but for the most part you can see that these all sort of uh, live in one spectrum just like if I were to type in Christmas you do get some blues but you get a lot of reds and greens so these colors are you know really useful if you wanted to come in here and maybe save one of these you could just click on info um, sometimes I'll just grab a screenshot but you can save these to your library if you are a Adobe Creative Cloud user and you know there's just a few other ways that you can use this you can download the actual color swatches here and then install them in either Photoshop or Illustrator and they're just really useful ways to get color palettes for your work so now let's jump over into Photoshop so that I can kind of demonstrate for you guys how this works in action. So what I have here are some uh, elements that I'll be using to demonstrate this from the Design Cuts Marketplace. 
And for this, I will be using the Freshy Design set from Derumo Shop. Now in here, there's some really fun patterns, um, objects, ink spots, and things like that that you guys can play around with. So let's just go ahead and open one of these up. Now I'm going to bring this into Photoshop here just as a pattern. And just so I can show you guys, you know, some of the ways that we can change colors and kind of put this into action. All right, so let's just grab this, drag it over here into a document that I have. It's just a regular eight and a half by 11 document. And I just want to drop this into my file. Now, because this is a perfect square, we can basically, you know, tile this to create a repeat pattern. Okay, so I'm just going to make a couple copies of it really quick here. And it should be a seamless pattern as well, which is nice. So you just need to duplicate it a few times, move it over here so it lines up. Okay, and you can already tell that with this first pattern that we're using here, um, there are some reds, some yellows, and some less saturated colors as well. So remember before when I mentioned, you know, when you're dealing with color, you sort of have the intensity or the saturation of the color as well as the lightness and darkness of that color to think about. Okay, so there are instances where, you know, certain colors may not work together, right? If you're using a, a bright blue with a bright yellow or something like that, um, you're going to want to make one of those colors either less saturated or darker than the other so that they can stand out. And that kind of goes along with contrast, which is another important lesson that I've talked about in one of my previous Design Basics videos. Okay, so our pattern is just about set up here. And now all I'm going to do is merge all of these together into one single layer. And then I can scale it down a little bit. All right, or just move it over. And now what I like to do when I'm kind of experimenting with colors is apply adjustment layers. So if you're in Photoshop, adjustment layers are a very quick and dirty way to just see different color results uh, very quickly. So let's go in here and we can add a hue saturation adjustment layer. Now if I just move the hue around, you can see how the colors are just changing like this, right? So you can get a sense of what other color schemes may look like. For example, if I wanted more of this kind of orangey color, you know, orange and purple, that kind of works together. These aren't complementary colors by any means, um, but they sort of work in a way because the background is that less saturated color. Um, you can also boost the saturation overall or completely desaturate it, and you can see the effect that that has. So let me just return over here to some of these objects so that I can create uh, sort of a new pattern from scratch or at least just bring in a couple of elements here uh, to show you guys something. All right, so here I just have two more objects that I'm going to be bringing in, and I'm just going to use these to demonstrate another kind of example here. So let's just go ahead and turn off those previous two layers. And I'll just make these smart objects really quickly as well so that I can resize them without any loss in quality. And let's just start off with this pineapple here. So you can already see the colors here that we're working with. It's sort of this bluish green and a purple color. But if I want to go ahead and change this, again, I can do this with adjustment layers. Maybe I'll just bring this hue saturation adjustment layer to the top. And if I play around with this saturation and hue slider, you can see how these colors are changing. So here we're kind of dealing with cool colors because it's in that green and purple and blue family. But if I want to make it feel warmer, all I have to do is slide this over here to get more of a yellow uh, magenta kind of color scheme going. And let's say, for example, I like the color of the top of this palm up here, but not necessarily um, all of this green. Well, I can just quickly kind of use the layer mask that's built into this adjustment layer and just brush it out. All right, so now we're only affecting that top piece of the pineapple. So I would want to go ahead and add another hue saturation adjustment layer, specifically for the bottom of the palm. So even though the top is changing, I'm only paying attention to the bottom. And then what I can do here is now brush out the top. All right, so the mask is a little bit rough, but you guys can see that now this feels you know, very warm. And if I just decrease the saturation a little bit, all right, that seems to be working pretty nicely. 
Okay, so now we kind of have a, a modified version of our pineapple that we can work with here. All right, and then I'll put this into a folder, just call it pineapple, and then I can scale it down. All right, maybe rotate it a little bit like that. And now let's turn on our second object here. Okay, so here we have this sort of popsicle. Now there's a few ways that you can go about this. Just like when I was showing you guys in the beginning, how you can use colors that are either in the same family, maybe monochromatic, or analogous colors, which are you know right next to each other. You can use these and keep them in mind as you work um, to get a sort of desired effect. So for example, if you want you know this whole thing to feel you know really cool and you know sort of fresh, you can use cool colors such as the you know, purples, greens, and blues, but I generally like to mix those things together so that you get a nice balance and harmony in your color palette. All right, so here I've got the popsicle, which I'm just going to resize a little bit. And I'm probably going to want to change some of the colors here too. So let's go ahead and add another hue saturation adjustment layer with the clipping mask. And then I can just take a look at, you know, moving this hue slider around. Okay, so this color scheme is kind of working for me. Maybe I'll, you know, increase the saturation just a bit. All right, and then put this into a folder here. Just call it Popsicle. We'll move it over or move it up. And then let's just reduce the size a little bit more. Okay, and now I'm just going to repeat it, kind of scatter it around a little bit. And I can then do the same by duplicating the pineapple. All right, maybe move that over here to kind of offset it a little bit. And what I'd like to do is bring in another color. So let me go back to my objects here and maybe just bring in another object, something simple. All right, so maybe I'll grab these sunglasses and bring these in because they're basically just a, you know, one or two colors. There we go. Let's grab these sunglasses, drag them in, make them a smart object. And now you can see that we have a little bit of purple here in the popsicle already. So we really don't need to change the sunglasses all that much uh, to make it feel like it still sort of belongs within this design here, within this pattern that we're building. All right, so I'm just going to reduce the size a little bit. And I just wanted to bring in a third object so that we don't have too many of these other shapes repeated. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the same thing here where we just apply a hue saturation adjustment layer. Use the previous layer to create a clipping mask. And now we can move that hue slider around a bit just to see what it looks like. All right, so even if you wanted to go with more of a saturated uh, magenta kind of color like that, it still feels like it kind of belongs with the palm of the pineapple or that middle stripe there in the popsicle. All right, so let's try something like that. Put it in a folder and just call it sunglasses. And then we can duplicate it and just repeat it a couple of times here to mix it up so we get a little more variety. All right, we'll do the same with a few of these other shapes here. And you know, you don't have to be super precious about this. We're just kind of doing a down and dirty demonstration. All right, and let's just make that a little bit bigger. Move that over. Okay, we can do that. Grab this pineapple, this copy here. Move it up a little bit. And now we have sort of a rough pattern in place, but we have full control over all of the colors here. So now let's go ahead and just bring in a background color. And for this, I'll just use a solid color adjustment layer. And now here you can see that we can sample colors from within our design or we can just enter new colors manually. Now, if I were to just sample a color directly from one of these objects here, you can see that we lose all of the edges in the pineapple. Or if I sample a color from the sunglasses here, we kind of lose a lot of that detail there. But if I just go ahead and make this darker or less saturated, then all of a sudden these objects start to appear and pop out a little bit more. So try to keep that in mind when you're working. Now, once you have a color palette that's sort of working and you're happy with the way things are looking, you can just continue to apply other adjustment layers here. So if you wanted to then go ahead and shift the hue 
overall, you can see that now we have a much more cool type of design here. We get a cooler feeling from this because we're using more greens and blues here. All right, and you can go ahead and increase the saturation a bit just to experiment with this and see how it looks. So as I was talking about before, you know, it's really about finding harmony in the work and whether you want to have all of your colors kind of living um, in the same family where they feel monochromatic, you can use colors that are sort of next to each other, like the purples, pinks, and blues, uh, which is more of the analogous colors that I showed you guys in the beginning, or you can use those complementary colors. There's a whole variety of ways that you can experiment with this until you find something that feels balanced and harmonious in your design. Now, let's say, for example, I wanted all of these to be maybe just one or two colors. Well, I'm going to add a gradient map here and just demonstrate how that works. So let's go ahead and maybe make this, instead of orange, we'll make it yellow. So we now have a complementary color going on. We've got purple to yellow. All right, but if instead I change that from yellow to orange, now we've got this analogous color scheme going on here. All right, and you can play around with these colors. You can use a very bright orange, but again, keep in mind that the brightness or the saturation is very close to that bright saturated yellow. So if I want this to work a little bit better together, well, I would either need to desaturate this yellow a little bit, and I can also maybe make the orange a little bit darker and desaturated as well. And you can see that that starts to work a little bit better. Now, it might not be the nicest color scheme in the world, but you kind of get the idea and you can see how changing these things up um, you know can work out nicely now this is working a little bit better for me because to me this is closer to um, you know a harmonious color palette here so if instead of this desaturated yellow we can make it a little bit more orange and I think that that is working pretty nicely okay so in this case we've used a handful of adjustment layers just to kind of play around with the colors here. So I can put all of these into a folder and we've just created a custom pattern with a couple of objects here. So something like this could work nicely, say for a flyer design perhaps, um, if you wanted to do some kind of uh, you know, ice cream event or some kind of summary thing like that. I don't know, maybe a kid's birthday party. These are the kind of things that you could work with and elements that you would use and the way that you could experiment with the color. So we had our first pattern here and then we have a custom pattern that we just created using a handful of objects. So I hope that you guys can see some of the ways that colors can work together. Um, I've tried to show you sort of that condensed abbreviated version of the different types of colors and color families and how you can achieve harmonious color palettes within your designs. So whether you're using the Adobe Color tool that I've showed you guys in the beginning or whether you're just experimenting with colors and adjustment layers in a program like Photoshop or Illustrator, there really is a multitude of ways to achieve the end result. And I just wanted to show you guys a couple of quick ways that I do it personally uh, anytime I'm working in any of these programs. So I hope that you guys have found this tip to be useful. Hopefully you, uh, you know, picked up a few new things along the way. If you guys did enjoy this video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up, smash that like button, and be sure to subscribe to the Design Cuts YouTube channel for more. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Eric Vasquez, and we'll see you next time.